Okay, so in this video, I'm going to break down an acid base neutralization calculation question from an AQA A level chemistry pass paper. Okay, so regardless of if you're doing AQA or not, this will be helpful. Even if you're doing LXL or OCR, it doesn't matter. The maths behind the neutralization calculations is not going to change. Okay, so let's jump straight into this question then. In an experiment, 10.35 centimeters cubed of 0.1 mole per decimeter cubed hydrochloric acid are added to 25 centimeters cubed of 0.15 moles per decimeter cubed barium hydroxide solution. Calculate the pH of the solution that forms at 30 degrees Celsius, and we're given some Kw values here, and we have to give our answer to two decimal places. Okay, now pause the video, attempt it yourself, and then to carry on playing the video, see where you went wrong. Hopefully you got the correct answer. If not, it's all good. Just keep practicing, okay? These questions can be quite difficult, but if you lay out the step-by-step -step sequence of how to solve these questions, it actually becomes quite easy. Okay, so first off, we're going to be using a mole equation, okay? Now our two mole equations, hopefully you're already aware of them, is moles equals mass over MR and moles equals concentration times volume. Okay, now primarily we have to use this one. So if you look at the question again quickly, we can see that we're given a volume and a concentration of the HCl, and we're given a volume and a concentration of the barium hydroxide. And this makes it super easy for us to one, calculate the moles of hydrochloric acid, and two, calculate the moles of barium hydroxide. So our acid and then our base, and then we're gonna follow the next step after that. So first off, let's just do our moles of hydrochloric acid. This is going to be our concentration, 0 0.1, multiplied by our volume, 10.35. Now, in chemistry, in the UK specifically, we always have our apparatus to centimetres cubed, all right? But this isn't the case for these calculations because our concentration is in moles per decimetre cubed, all right? So that's the volume unit that we need to do. And to convert from centimetres cubed into decimetres cubed, all we have to do is divide by 1,000, which is exactly the same as times 10 to minus 3. All right, so I'm going to write out the next one, which would be our moles of barium hydroxide. Barium hydroxide. Very important to note here that with our group 2 hydroxides, we have the hydroxide complex of the OH minus ion, and that is bonded to your barium. But because barium is group 2 metal with a 2 plus charge, we need two lots of the OH minus to balance it to make it a neutral compound. So just keep that in mind because they'll chuck in these group two hydroxides now and again, just to test your knowledge for that, okay? So if we have our moles of barium hydroxide, then it's gonna be our concentration, 0 0.15, multiplied by a volume, 25 centimeters cubed, which again, we have to convert, okay? So 25 times 10 to minus three, easy as that. Now, if you plug these into your calculator, you should get the answers of 1.035 times 10 to minus three moles and 3.75 times 10 to minus three moles again, okay? Now, what do we have to do next? Now, within this neutralization, we're having an acid, so some sort of H plus donor, reacting with a hydroxide, so some sort of H plus acceptor, okay? Now, within this hydroxide here, this barium hydroxide, there are two moles of hydroxide ions for every one mole of compound. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, so when we're actually working out the moles of the hydroxide which reacted in this neutralization reaction, we have to think to ourselves, okay, if there's one, if there's 3.75 moles of this compound reacting, when it dissociates and we have our individual hydroxide ions, two moles of those hydroxide ions are going to react in that ratio. Okay, so therefore our moles of hydroxide ions then, which are reacting, is going to be this value, our 3.75 times 10 to minus three times two, okay? Always follow that process when we're dealing with group two hydroxides. And that's just going to give us an answer of 7.5 times 10 to minus three. Okay, so here, hopefully you guys were okay with this, these three steps here. Now comes the stage in neutralization, which can confuse a few people and they're not too sure where to go next. All you have to do is you have to think to yourself, which of these moles is bigger? So in this neutralization then, is the amount or the moles of acid, or the moles of the hydroxide bigger. And that will determine what is in excess after the reaction has carried out. Okay, so in this case, pause the video for a second, think to yourself, okay, is the moles of the hydroxide or the moles of the acid bigger? 
And what we have to do is minus them from each other to determine the excess moles of either the acid or the base. Okay then, so the moles of the hydroxide ions, which are in excess, so once neutralization is carried out, there's going to be some remaining, and that is due to this value of moles being higher than this value. All right, so that's just going to be 7.5 times 10 to the minus 3, minus our moles of the acid, 1.035 times 10 to the minus 3. And that's going to give us an answer of 6.465, times 10 to minus three moles, okay? Now, let's say for example, the moles of the acid were higher. That will mean that our acid is in excess. Therefore, we would just do the moles of the acid minus the moles of the hydroxide. Hopefully that makes sense. Depending on the question, it will determine which is present in excess. Now, in this example here, we're given a value of Kw, which we understand means the pH is gonna be basic okay it's going to be above seven okay so now we have the moles of the hydroxide ions in excess we can use this and we can plug it into our kw expression in order to calculate the ph okay so think to yourself for a second what is our expression for kw our ionic product of water okay all this is going to be is h plus concentration multiplied by oh minus concentration okay now, this isn't pure water, okay, this is a solution. So we can't just simplify it to H plus squared and get rid of the hydroxide ion, we can't do that. So we're just gonna have to carry this out as it is. Now, we're not concerned with Kw. Now, at this stage, we've already been given our Kw right here, 1.47, so we, we're not concerned with this guy right here. We're concerned with our H plus concentration and our OH minus concentration, okay? The reason that we're concerned with our H plus concentration is because ultimately that will give us our pH, and the reason for that is because our pH equation is pH equals minus log H plus ions, okay? Now, we can't get to our H plus ions without knowing our OH minus ions, and that's because if we've got an equation involving three variables, we need two out of the three variables to be able to rearrange it and make it the subject. Hopefully that makes sense, okay? Now, so far, we haven't got any concentrations. All we've got is moles, okay? So what I'm going to do next is actually look at our, what is the concentration of our hydroxide ions? So concentration of hydroxide ions then is going to equal this equation rearranged to make concentration the subject which is just moles over volume if you struggle with rearranging just keep practicing honestly um it will just come with time alternatively you can use the triangle method so n equals cv um, and that will help you with rearranging okay so concentration of hydroxide ions then it's going to be our moles so we just calculated that our 6.465 times 10 to the minus 3 divided by our volume so what is our volume going to be is it going to be this right here is it going to be 25 centimeters cubed or is it going to be 10.35 okay it's neither of those guys okay if we have a beaker for example we've chucked the acid in and we put the base in as well it's going to have a collective volume of these two added together so that's just going to be 35 0.35 okay and that would be our total volume now again this is in centimeters cubed so if i just put that in there 35.35 we have to convert that into decimeters cubed again okay so times 10 to minus 3 or exactly the same as divide by a thousand so hopefully you're noticing a common theme here centimeters cubed has to be converted okay just make an important note of that normally students are completely fine with this so i'm not too concerned with that now when you plug this into your calculator you should get an answer of 0 0.1829 moles per decimeter cubed all right and that's our concentration of hydroxide ions okay then so if i rub this out quickly um, if we look at this again, we can say, okay, we have our Kw given to us in the question. We have our hydroxide ion concentration that we just calculated. We can rearrange this expression to make H plus ions the subject, okay? So H plus concentration is going to equal Kw divided by our hydroxide ion concentration. All right, and Kw in this case is just 1.47 times 10 to the minus 14 divided by our concentration that we just calculated 0.1829. And if you put that in your calculator, you should get an answer of 8.037 times 10 to the minus 14, all right? So a real small number of H plus ions, okay? So when we compare these two values here, you can see that the concentration of hydroxide is significantly higher than this concentration right here, all right? 
And hopefully that can tell you when you glance at that, if the concentration of hydroxyl ions is significantly higher than the concentration of protons or H plus ions, we know that we're going to have a very high pH here. Okay, so all I'm going to do is plug this value into our equation right here, and that is going to give us our pH. So if we say then our pH equals minus log of our 8.037 times 10 to the minus 14, that is going to give us an answer of 13.0949. All right, so is that our final answer? We just chuck that on the page. No, you wouldn't, okay? Very important, in AQA, they love to see our answer to two decimal places for pH as well as pKa, okay? So if we round this down to two dPs, it's gonna be 13.09. All right, and that would be our final answer. Okay, so next up, super quickly, I just wanted to cover the examiner's report. These are super helpful resources, okay? You guys are out there revising, please take advantage of these. Just go onto the AQA website, check them out, find them for yourself, read through them. Specifically take note of the questions where a very small percentage of students scored the full marks, because if this question comes up again, then you're going to want to secure as many marks as possible, and this should be helping you to do that. So most students calculated the amount in moles of the reactants, but often did not multiply the amount of barium hydroxide by two to give the amount of hydroxide ions, okay? So just remember that when these compounds, these ionic compounds, when they dissociate in solution, you're going to get them separating into their constituent ions, okay? So our barium hydroxide is, again, mentioned a group two metal is going to have two lots of this hydroxide ion within it. So you always have to multiply the moles of this by two to get our moles of hydroxide ions. So to just try and remember that, okay? So what's next? Some students did not convert the amount of moles to concentration, and some did not quote their pH to two decimal places. Okay, so you may look at this and think, how do people not do that? It's in the question, they're literally telling you right here. Often the case, guys, you're rushing through the exam, you're stressed, you're panicked about the time limits. So you often miss important points in the question, all right? So normally what I recommend my students to do is when you finish these big chunky questions, okay, these six, these five, six, seven markers, just glance over the question again, see if there's anything you missed, all right? Now, the point that they mentioned about the concentration, okay, not converting the moles to concentration, just remember that these expressions square brackets, all right? These always involve concentration, so you're gonna have to think to yourself, okay, these are the initial moles that we have here, and then we put it in the beaker, or the conical flask, or whatever's happening here, okay? Now, when that happens, we're going to get an ultimate change in volume, therefore the concentration is going to change, because concentration is amount per volume. All right, so just, just try and keep that in mind as well. Now, uh, we've covered the two decimal places. It discriminated well, only 20% of students scored four marks, okay? So these neutralization acid-base questions are quite difficult. The point where I assume most people struggle is this stage, okay? It would be where we work out what is in excess, because if we're reacting, if we have an acid plus base, and this is reacting in some way, one of these two will ultimately be in excess, and that will determine which pH we have. If the acid is in excess, we're going to get pH below 7. If the base is in excess, we're going to get a pH above 7. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, guys, so that's the end of the video. Hopefully you learned something. If you did, smash the like button below. Subscribe for future maths and science content. Best of luck in your exams. Peace.